Welcome back to another Torch review. I've got a JetBeam WL20 Torch in for testing today. This was sent in via JetBeam for review, so we'll skim over the details briefly. We have three colors of LED. They're dual LED for each color. That gives you an idea on the range as well. We've also got that triple switch design. Now on the back, some of the specs, you can pause that if you want to have a look. And the main one is the power levels. And there are four of those the main uh, white light and two for the red now included with this you also get a switch cover and two spare o-rings there's your micro usb cable for charging the battery and a low profile wrist strap this is user guide and warranty card i will show the user manual a bit later on during the video now the holster on this is quite nice you've got a little tab section on the front and it has the standard velcro attachment on the back that you can open that up just below that is the sewn in belt loop now this has a neoprene padding on it so it's uh, not too thick but it does provide a decent bit of protection for the torch because the torch is a little bit bigger in terms of the head diameter i actually like this holster quite a lot it is open at the bottom as well but it does cover the entire torch and offers a nice bit of protection so I'm pleased to see they've done something a little bit different with that. Now onto the torch itself, you can see it's a, a standard sort of length, perhaps a touch longer. It's really that head diameter that is a bit bigger. And they have a decent bit of knurling in the middle, anti-roll design, and quite a lot of fins as well to dissipate the heat. This is a quick look on the switch. You have the main button in the middle with the two paddles on the side. It is slightly proud though, and that means to say that you can't, uh, stand it up unfortunately that would have been nice if you could even though it is a bit tail heavy but it does resist rolling around I do like the fact they've added quite a bit of uh, cooling to this so that should give us reasonable run times at the higher power levels notice the stainless steel crenulated bezel now with the LEDs there's a cutout section there you can see with smooth reflectors they're quite deep and there's the XPG3 S4 uh, for the white one and they've just put a numerical one for the other two LEDs. You'll be able to see the color difference when you rotate it around. And there is a firm click action when you twist it around. But I would say it is fairly stiff turning it. You can do it single-handedly. Perhaps not if you've got woolly gloves on. Might have just eased that off a little bit. Also make sure you don't unscrew the base cap because that will stop these switches from working on the bottom. So interesting design, definitely something which is a little bit different. Now we'll unscrew the base cap and you can see there's the spring, there's the contact points as well. And the battery, we'll do a little test on that later on. This is a 2,600 milliamp hours. Um, I've seen this a bit with some of the torches coming in. I would prefer, say, something around about 3,000 mark, but uh, it seems to be more commonly happening with the slightly lower capacity batteries. You can see spring inside as well, so you can use flat top cells with this no problem at all. We don't just have to use the protected ones. Nice enough quality, I have to say. I do like the build on this. feels very solid. We're going to the UI now. So the main switch you can use quick press for the momentary turbo a full press on and off doesn't have a memory though it goes always goes back to the highest power level when it's been switched off which is perhaps something that i would change i'm not a big fan of that myself now the paddle switches with the white led gives you instant access to strobe they both do exactly the same thing and the red and green leds takes you to the momentary which is the same as if you're using the main switch with those two colors now when the um, when it's on the paddle switches cycle the power levels four for the white two for the red just a single one for the green and then you can push and hold and then you can take you into the strobe mode so the ui is pretty good but there's no access to instant access to the lowest output that's probably one of the only things i'd say it does have uh, quick access to the strobe uh, on or off which will probably appeal to some people just rotating around the head now just to give you an idea with the leds it does remember the power setting if say for example you switch it to the low power setting for the white leds and twist the head around it remembers if it's left on just not if it's switched off charging speed was about 840 milliamps and you see the red led when it's charging which switches to green the termination 4.19 so no issues on that touch under the 2600 with the capacity test but close enough 
and my water submersion test which is about half an hour didn't see problems with that there's the user guide really probably don't need it but it will just list out some of the things here in case I've missed anything uh, should have covered everything um, it's very simple tools to operate really don't see any problems at all with that now we're going to go through the beam shots to start off at the mid level this torch has a bit of range, it's a bit more focused. We move up to the high point now, you see that it is um, pushing more to the middle than the outer edges. You do get a bit of spread at the higher power levels. Cat doesn't seem too impressed on that one. Now when we go into the red, this is the high. And you've got the low mode, which is just rated down to 20. I'd say it's a bit higher than that though, in real world use. And the green, although it might not look like it, the green is a fair bit brighter. Something to do with how the camera reacts, I think, to different colours of light. The green's definitely the brightest. And this gives you an idea compared to the concept one. So it's quite a cool tint on the jet beam, even compared to other cool LEDs. I'll run through my usual beam shots now, play a bit of music. Then I'll come back with a few thoughts at the end. Just to give you a quick side note before I finish with the WL20, I'm getting less torches sent in for review. I assume that is because some manufacturers are not overly keen on my mentioning weaker points of the product. It's really important for me to give unbiased and critical reviews of products and areas that I would improve them, so I'm not going to change that. So if I get sent less torches or other products, that's you know that's just a byproduct of it. I am not a salesman. This is a review channel. I try and give you an idea about what is good and what might not be good, so you can make an informed choice. Saying that, the annoyances on this, uh, the lowest output isn't that low. 20 lumens is a bit high for me. You also can't access the low mode. It always starts in the highest output. I would have liked a shortcut to get to the lowest output. 
on the upside very nice build quality a bit heavier although not massively so and you have those three leds uh, three colors built in well, the six leds in total which means that you've got no filters to lose if you're going to use that feature green and the red then i think you'll quite like it i wouldn't use it much myself it's not really the sort of torch that i would go for but if you're going to use that you might get on with it quite well and the triple switch design is quite nice too so uh, it's not a bad torch at all but that is the appeal for it is the red and green aspect I don't think it's the best torch to get if you're just going to use mainly the white LED light. So thanks for watching the video. I do appreciate it. And I'll catch up with you in my next video review very soon.